Hi everyone, I'm Jun from National University of Singapore. It's my pleasure to present our work, Watson, Abstracting Behaviors from Audio Laws with Aggregation of Contextual Semantics. This is a joint work with Zheng Long, Yin Fang, Kai Hang, my advisor Zheng Kai, and uh, Jen. Nowadays, security incidents are on the rise globally, and uh, we have been witnessing cyber attacks with increasing scale and uh, sophistication. The natural question following these uh, attacks include what happened, who is affected, and how to prevent attacks. To answer these questions, endpoint monitoring solutions are widely deployed in large organizations to record audio loss for attack investigation. Audio loss is a history of events representing OS-level activities. They can provide deep visibility into security incidents with data provenance. For example, here we present a simplified log entry of system call read. During provenance analysis, we can find the information flow from a file to a process. To facilitate attack investigation, researchers use a provenance graph to navigate through audio loss. The nodes in the graph are system entities that like process, file, and socket, and edges are system calls. Analysts can perform backward tracking based on security incidents to find the root cause of the attack, and then perform the forward tracking to find its ramifications. However, in the real world, all your laws are always large scale, and the provenance graphs are too sophisticated to analyze. Related work tries to scale up provenance analysis by eliminating irrelevant system entities or improve the efficiency of log query system. However, they do not capture semantics behind load their data and leave re behavior recognition to analysts. That is, recognizing behaviors of interest and detecting threats still require intensive manual efforts. A significant problem faced by the analyst is the semantic gap between low-level events and high-level behaviors. Another line of research tries to bridge this gap by applying expert-defined specifications. They match audio events against the domain rules that describe behaviors. Examples of such rules include query graph, TTP specification, and type policy. However, behavior-specific rules heavily rely on domain knowledge, and they are time-consuming and error-prone to develop. In this world, we try to answer how can we abstract high-level behaviors from low-level audio loss, and then cluster similar behaviors to assist the human investigation. We use a motivating example to introduce a goal of behavior abstraction and its challenges. The test scenario is that a software tester exfiltrates sensitive data that he has access to. And this attacker tries to disguise the data exfiltration behavior as a common pro program development procedure. To do this, he first locates a secret.txt file and then copies this file to his own working directory as a source file. After that, he compiles this source code and then uploads the source code to a GitHub repo under his control. This attacker also performs benign behaviors in parallel to the attacks. And this uh, motivating example will generate over 400,000 events, and it's very hard for analysts to find interesting behaviors like data exfiltration behavior. Behavior abstraction helps by partitioning events into behaviors and uh, cluster similar ones. In this case, analysts can stay focused on the representative behaviors and uh, avoid uh, duplicate investigation on the similar behaviors. For example, data exfiltration behavior will be separated from other behaviors, and multiple similar program compiling and upload behaviors will be clustered. There are two technical challenges for behavior abstraction. First is the event semantics inference. Logs record general purpose system activities by that knowledge of high level semantics. For example, both data exfiltration behavior and the program compiling and upload behaviors include program compiling events. However, such events uh, present a different semantic meanings. The second challenge comes from the individual behavior identification. As we all know that the volume of audio loss is overwhelming. Even a single packet installation behavior will include over 50,000 events. Besides, audio events are highly interleaving. First, let's look at how an analyst manually interprets the semantics of audio events. Let's take a program compiling as an example. C compiler will first translate the source code into a sampling code. 
which are later used by assembler and uh, linked with the other object files as an executable file. However, such temporal files are named randomly in the system. That is, even you compile the same source code in the same system, you in most cases get different temporal files. By looking into the contextual information of these temporal files, analysts can find that they are all written by C compiler and read by assembler, indicating similar semantics. Let's go back to our motivating example. Data exfiltration behavior fails program compiling. So in this case, the context of the temporal files are changed, indicating different semantics. So based on this observation, we propose our first insight. The semantics of audio events can be revealed from the context in which they are used. We then study how do analysts manually identify behaviors from audio events. This figure shows the graph of data exfiltration behavior. To understand the high-level behavior included, analysts will perform forward tracking based on the root data object, which is secret.txt file. After tracking the information flows uh, starting from this uh, secret.txt file, analysts can find that the secret data is leaked, and this is a data exfiltration behavior. So here we propose our second insight. The behaviors can be summarized by tracking information flows looked at data objects. In this project, we propose Watson, an automatically behavior abstraction approach that aggregates the semantics of audio events to model behavioral patterns. The input is audio loss, like Nina's audit, and the output is representative behaviors. We propose to use a knowledge graph to represent audio loss. A knowledge graph is a directed acyclic graph built upon tribbles. Each triple is an audio event, and it consists of three elements, tail, head, and relation. Head and the tail elements are system entities, and the relation are system calls. The advantage of using a knowledge graph to represent audio loss is that a knowledge graph can unify heterogeneous audio events in a homogeneous manner. To further using contextual information to capture event semantics, we first need to have a suitable granularity. Prior world studies law semantics using events as a basic unit. However, this will lose contextual information within event. Based on this observation, we decided to work on element-level semantics inference to preserve more context. A general approach to capturing se contextual semantics is to employ an embedding model. It can map elements into a vector space, where the spatial distance represents semantic similarities. Specifically, we use a translation-based embedding model called TransE to learn the event semantics. The core idea of TransE is to use uh, head plus relation to define head to define tail, and this mirrors our intuition of using of using context to define semantics. To identify individual behaviors in audio loss, we apply adapted DFS to track information flows looked at data objects. We perform this DFS on every data object in the audio loss, except libraries. And the two behaviors are merged if one behavior is a subset of another one. Here we show the results of DFS on two subgraphs of program compiling and upload behavior and the data exfiltration behavior. As we can see, their high-level behaviors are similar. And the major difference comes from the program compiling this makes sense because the data exfiltration behavior fails program compiling. After we obtain event semantics and uh, individual behaviors, the next natural question is uh, how to aggregate event semantics to represent the behavior semantics. A naive way is to adapt the semantics or behaviors constituent events. However, this is based on assumption that audio events equally contribute to behavioral semantics. This but this assumption does not hold in practice. We observe that audio events uh, contribute to behavior semantics uh, not in the same way. For example, utilities like LS are commonly used uh, to locate files in high-level behaviors, but they do not reflect behavioral semantics. We also observe that behavior-related events are common across behaviors, while behavior-unrelated events are offset. 
Based on this observation, we pro apply the frequency as a matrix to define event importance. We quantify the frequency using IDF because it can give it can give more discriminative capacity to less common events in behaviors. We also observe that noisy events do not contribute to behavioral semantics. And here we identify and reduce two types of noisy events, which are redundant events and mountain events. The details of the definitions can be found in our paper. In the last phase, we first cluster semantically similar behaviors using HCA algorithm. And then we extract the most representative behaviors for analyst investigation. We define behavior representativeness using its average similarity with other behaviors in the same cluster. And we expect to see a substantial analyst workload reduction because the analysts do not need to go through the whole behavior space to find the potential threat and the interest, interesting behaviors. To evaluate Watson, we set up two experimental datasets. The simulated dataset is collected in a controlled enterprise environment. It consists of over 200 million events. And the DARPA trace dataset is a public APT dataset it can, which with over 700 million events. We implement Watson as a prototype and evaluate the implementation on its behavior abstraction accuracy, event semantics explainability, and its efficacy in attack investigation. To evaluate the accuracy, we use vector representation semantics of behaviors abstracted by Watson to predict SSH sessions in our simulated dataset with similar behaviors. Our behavior candidates include 70 daily routines and 8 real-life attacks. And we notice that there are extensive noisy behaviors in the SSH sessions. The key result is that Watson achieves a high F1 score on both benign and malicious behavior abstraction. We next reason the event semantics abstracted by Watson. And we use TSNE to project the embedding space into a 2D plan. And this will give us an intuition of embedding distribution. These two figures show the embedding distribution of 25 data objects and uh, 53 programs. As we can see, similarly, similar system entities are clustered in the embedding space. For example, network connections are clustered according to connection ports, and they are separated from files. We also find that the programs are clustered in the embedding space. We next measure the analysis workload reduction in the APT attack in investigation in the DARPA trace dataset. We define the analysis workload as the number of events an analyst needs to go through to recognize all behaviors. The key result is that Watson achieves a two orders of magnitude reduction in the analysis workload and the behaviors. To summarize, in attack investigation, we find that security analysts are always overwhelmed by a large amount of audio events. In this work, we propose Watson to abstract behaviors from audio events and cluster semantically similar behaviors. We follow the following insights. We infer audio event semantics by their contextual information in the audio logs. And we identify behaviors with information flows rooted at data objects. Our evaluation shows that Watson substantially reduces analysis workload and achieves a high F1 score on behavior abstraction. Thanks for your time and attention. I'm happy to take questions.